I'm Gavin Foster, I'm a professor here at the University of Southampton. So the project called Descent into the Ice House was about studying the um, causes of the latest transition from a greenhouse climate state to an ice house climate state. So the project was funded by the National Environment Research Council. It was one of four that they funded under the theme of uh, the co-evolution of, of life and the planet. Our project was looking at the most recent time interval um, in, that, uh, in that theme. So over the last 500 million years, and probably over a longer time interval, the Earth has cycled between these warm climates and cold climate states. And the most recent one happened about 34 million years ago, it's a transition between a warm climate and a cold climate. And we don't really know what causes these grand changes in, in, in climate. And we wanted to study in this project what the causes behind the most recent transition. And so we wanted to test whether that was driven by changes in the way that the continents are configured, changes in the way that the ocean currents behave, or whether it was changes in the, in the atmospheric um, concentration of certain greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide. There are two principal ways in which we can try and understand this latest, uh, this major transition, is that firstly we can reconstruct the climate system of the past, and the other way is we can use climate models to try and interrogate that understanding and get to the bottom of why the climate is changing. I'm Elenia Nagnostu. I'm a postdoc here at the University of Southampton. And my role in the project has been to um, develop carbon dioxide records of the atmosphere during the Eocene era. So there are these archives of ancient sediments, which are sediments that they have been drilled from the deep sea floor, but also from land, like in Tanzania, which is the, the uh, site of interest in this study. And what it is, is you have these layers of sediments that they deposit through time on the seafloor, and then we go now and we drill cores from the seafloor and what you have is like the youngest layer towards the oldest layer of sediment. But when the sediments are deposited, they also carry with them the remnants of organisms that they float in the sea during that time. So that's quite nice for us because we find all those ancient fossils um, from Eocene and what we do is we pick them out from the sediments and then we clean them and we analyze them for their chemical composition. Our element of choice for this work was boron isotopes. They're based on an element called boron, which exists in different forms with slightly different mass. And what is interesting is uh, when these cells grow, they form calcium carbonate bodies and they trap this element in, but depending on how much was the acidity of the water where they were bathed. And this acidity of the water is related to the carbon dioxide concentration of the atmosphere. So when we pick up those fossil cells, we can measure this boron isotope composition and we can say something about the acidity of the water and therefore the carbon dioxide concentration of the ancient atmosphere. My name's Dan Lunt, I'm from the University of Bristol and I'm a climate modeler. So in this project, we've made use of climate models. Now, these models are actually exactly the same models that are used to make, or very similar models to those that are used to make weather forecasts. First of all, we use these models, first of all, just to simulate the climate on our computers of the climate system as it was 50 million years ago during this warm greenhouse time period. Now, the way you do that is effectively you play God and you take your model and you move around the continents and you raise up the mountains and you sink the ocean and you create a world that is effectively as it was 50 million years ago. And then you can also play God by doing some experiments with the model. So, for example, you can change the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the model. And then you can look at the relative importance of doing these two things, changing in continents compared with changing the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere for controlling how warm the climate was at the time. And when we did that, we found that actually changing the amount of carbon dioxide was much more important than moving the continents around. So the, moving the continents around, for example, gave us a warming of perhaps just half a degree over the world as a whole, whereas changing the amount of carbon dioxide moved, uh, increased the temperature by of the order 10 degrees or more. So it shows that carbon dioxide, according to our model, is much more important for driving warmth than the position of the continents. So what we find is that the warmest time period of the Eocene, the one that is called early Eocene climactic optimum, um, also had very high carbon dioxide concentrations of 1400 parts per million. This, just to bring it to a comparison to modern, is about 3.5 times modern or five times 
what was before the Industrial Revolution in terms of carbon dioxide, it's quite high. But then as the Earth cooled towards the late Eocene and when the Antarctic started glaciating in the Oligocene, um, the carbon dioxide dropped progressively towards more like three times pre-industrial concentrations. So the other thing we were able to do was to look at this cooling trend from the early Eocene to the latest Eocene and look at the patterns between the equator and the pole in the cooling that we saw in the model compared with the data. And actually, amazingly to our surprise, they actually agreed very well, indicating that the changes in carbon dioxide were the most important reasons for that cooling that we see in the data. So the main findings of the project have been threefold. We've been better able to document the patterns of cooling that's happened, much, much better than has been done previously. We've uh, been able to document that atmospheric CO2 has declined through the time interval. And we, by using the, the climate models, we've been able to interrogate the cause of that, uh, that cooling, and we've been able to identify that it's CO2 that's probably driving the cooling that we can see. So it's the decline in atmospheric CO2 has caused the latest transition from a greenhouse state to the ice house state. One of the powerful uh, ways we can use this sort of research is to help us understand the, the climate of the future. The climate of the past, the Eocene period that we were looking at, that, that warm climate was driven by elevated CO2. And actually the levels of CO2 are very similar to what we expect at the end of this coming century. So by looking back into the past, we're actually getting a window into how the future might play out. So hopefully research like this will help us better understand where we're heading in that warm future.